The trailer begins with a figure standing in Mogwin's palace, right in front of Mikola's cocoon, where we last left him. And it's revealed later in the trailer that interacting with his withered hand is how you will be transported to the realm of shadows. This first new location that we see in the trailer immediately reminded me of a spot in Lornia on the North Shore where you can see Rai Lucaria in the center and then you can see a belfry and then you see the Cathedral of Manisales and that is kind of what I saw in the trailer here. Even this arc on this little pillar kind of looks like the same ones they have in Rai Lucaria. So I'm not sure if it's related in any way, but I just thought the placement of the building, you can even see the bridge here, the belfry, and then the Cathedral of Manisales, which looks a lot like the one in this image to me. I just thought the, the placement of those three buildings was very, um, it just felt very familiar. You'll also notice hundreds of these ghostly little headstones, and these are much like the ghostly apparitions you see in the game that are supposed to signify of what used to be. And so this might, this might mean that there was, um, a lot of death has happened here. And here's another area with lots of little ghost headstones. Um, a map marker, which means this will be one of the locations that we have to travel to to unlock the new map. And it looks like the ruins of a town overlooked by a ledge that is overtaken with rotted or just overgrown dead trees, dead roots. And now we come back to this area that just reminds me so much of Lake of Luernia, just with Rai Lucario being in the center and then the Erd tree over it. And then you have all the little buildings overlooking at this area down here. Reminds me of the Gate Town ruins. Uh, you have the little building that looks like the cathedral over here. So I know that this is just a new area, but the fact that it looks so familiar is just a testament to how well they succeeded in making a completely new map that feels like it has always been a part of the first one. In an IGN interview with Miyazaki about the trailer, he states that the player will be following in the footsteps of Mikola into the Land of Shadow, trying to see what he's going to do there. And he says that it takes place on an entirely separate map that is about the size of Limgrave. So even though I'm getting these vibes of, oh, I've been here before, I've seen this, I don't really think we're going to be revisiting any of the old map. But I am not shutting down the possibility that this looks familiar because it's sort of an alternate reality version of what we do see. So maybe this is just another way the world could have gone here in this shadow realm. And this looks like the corrupted or shadow version of the Erd tree that was either struck by lightning or set on fire in some way. You see a lot of ash. And I'm getting this vibe that it's been filled with something meant to hold it together, kind of like Kintsugi, which is the ancient art of mending pottery using powdered gold or powdered silver in a way to highlight its cracks um, and make it beautiful again. So maybe we're looking at a Kintsugi Erd tree here that was in some way damaged and it's being held together by gold, it appears. And I love the draped cloth right here, this thin veil that reminds me so much of America's bedchamber. She has the same sort of draped cloth coming down from her ceiling, but it just casts this beautiful shadow, as is the namesake of this DLC. But I just thought it's just such a beautiful, soft, flowy image. And here is what appears to be a great rune. Now, it looks very different from the ones in game because it's so crisp and unblemished and just, it looks perfect. 
compared to the ones that we've seen. There's no smoldering edge to it. So I'm not sure if it's a great rune. It does have a very long uh, tail and piece to it. It could just be a magical seal like the ones that we've seen before. And it kind of looks like a crescent moon, maybe a star. Which is interesting because a crescent moon and a star would automatically remind me of Vernala, who was his former star reading astrologer turned moon queen, but highly doubt this has anything to do with Vernala. In that forsaken place. And here we have we have um a line in that forsaken place blood must spill. This makes me think that the speaker is referring to Mogwin's palace, talking about the actions necessary before interacting with Mikola's hand. In that forsaken place, blood must spill. Maybe you have to give it some blood before you get to touch it. Um, and this guy right here, this guy I'm going to bet is a good guy. I bet he's a friend because there's something about him that's just giving me Iron Fist Alexander vibes. Maybe it's his portly stature mixed with the jar and the two of those together. Uh, it just kind of seems like it. <gasps> this is my favorite scene in the trailer. This just looks so dreamy and serene. I love this alabaster mask, the flowing hair, all of the purple flowers, and you can see some lilies in the back here. These are absolutely they have to be Trina's lilies. Purple was Trina's color, um, and St. Trina was Mikla's alter ego. So I'm very positive this scene here is strongly linked to Mikla. And this may very well be one of St. Trina's priests. These characters are mentioned in game as working for St. Trina, but you never actually see them. So I would be so giddy if this is actually one of um, Mikla's clerics. Okay, this room right here. This is actually the first place um, of the trailer I started working on this video because I immediately thought, oh my gosh, that looks like the Church of the Cuckoo. It has the same exact benches. And yes, I know that there is an expected level of asset reuse, but it's odd that this room that kind of looks like Church of the Cuckoo uses the same benches where you could go to another church in an, another part of the game and the benches are different. Like these benches are specifically Church of the Cuckoo benches. And then you have the same hanging cages here. You have the draped cages, even the same kind of shapes. You find these in the Church of the Cuckoo. So it's just odd. <laughs> That there's so many similarities here in this scene with the Cuckoo Church. Even the window you see here. Now, you don't have this window facing in the back of the Cuckoo room, but it has the same stonework here. This um, tracery, which is uh, the ornamental design up at the top of a window. And this stonework is specific so not every single building has the same tracery and window design, but it's isn't it convenient that this room that looks like the Church of the Cuckoo has the same um, it has the same imagery here, it has the same benches, it has all these little cages, it has the same window, and then it has the same platform here, this raised tiered platform. So instead of it being a, a gazebo, it's it's a throne. This scene makes me wonder what exactly is the Land of Shadow? Is it like an alternate reality of the Lands Between? Is this individual the the shadow version of the leader of Raya Lucaria? The shadow land version of Raya Lucaria? I am not sure. I just find it um I find it very, very curious how striking this specific location is. Oh, and this swamp. Okay, so this is 100% poison. <laughs> and it, again, it reminds me of an area in Luernia uh, falling on the lake, which is a poisonous um, area. But the water here looks the same as it does in the trailer. This portrait makes me think of Fia and one of the old kings that she was a deathbed companion to because the fringe right here on her cloak 
is the same style as the one that Fia wears. So maybe the shadow version of Fia? This area is giving off fair Missoula vibes, right? Just the structure, the built, maybe it's the building just crumpling into the sky or falling into the sky. Oh, maybe this is like, maybe it fell up. If it is kind of like an upside down world type situation. Here it looks like there's some blight. You have a um, closer view of the, the ashy earth tree. Now these spirals, um, I could have sworn I found them in game before, but I couldn't find them again. So I'm not sure if I've seen these spirals before or not, but yeah, this is going to be uh, one of the main areas for sure. They were never they just to be on the this guy, basket guy. Okay, Miyazaki actually had a lot to say about this basket guy that you wouldn't think He'd share so many details. Okay, so he says this giant basket of flame was a terrible weapon you used in a war that occurred in the land of shadow. It was a really gruesome weapon that was used. And the kindling that you see is actually the remains of bodies that were put in there to burn. And indeed, yes, you can see all these little appendages, all these little arms, the many, um, the many people that served as kindling for this weapon basket this is going to be like the fire giant all over again and i wonder if this line here they just happen to be on the losing side of a war really correlates sadly to all of the people that you see in this basket man oh here we have a horrible new creature to be afraid of <gasps> this guy okay so we need to look at this boss slowly because there's a lot there's a lot going on here. Here we have a hand clamping shut the lower jaw, a pair of teeth within a pair of teeth, a human foot, a lion's head, loose skin hanging over what looks to be multiple figures underneath. We have a leg here, a foot here, lots of horns, which are aspects of the crucible. And the teeth look like misbegotten teeth to me. They just look so uncanny and disturbing it certainly doesn't look well whatever is going on here and this lion's head perhaps is this shirash's discarded corpse did some weirdos find his skin and decide to wear it this it, it's giving off ludwig vibes from bloodborne And this looks like death blight. And then we see a pair of legs sitting on top of another person. This boss really reminded me of those Chinese lion costumes that are operated by multiple people that you see in parades. And here's our main baddie of the Shadow Realm, Mesmer. Now this incantation that he uses looks like a mixture of death, blight, um, blood, fire. There's a lot going on here. Oh, look at his face. Okay, so uh, this looks like a snake eye to me. <laughs> There's a lot of snake imagery with him. You have a snake up here on top of his his crown as well on his gauntlets, it looks like. So his fiery red hair, he's got to be of Radigan's lineage because Radigan's red hair is such a huge part of the game that I cannot imagine Mesmer would have red hair without any kind of relationship to him. And look at these huge red serpents. So I saw Mesmer, I saw the snakes, and I said, oh my gosh, is that, that's Riker's son. That has to be his son because of Rikard's relationship um, and connection to snakes. It's so important. It's such a huge part of his character. So is this Mikla's demonic nephew following him to the land of shadow to complete his, his pop's wishes of devouring all the demigods? This character also references mother. 
here. And this leaves us to wonder if his mother is Merica or if it's Tanith, is it someone else? Miyazaki actually gave us a huge clue about who his mother is. In addition to the DLC tracking down Mikola, it'll also follow the story of Queen Merica and what she did in the Land of Shadow and what led Mikola to follow her there. And that is probably the most shocking thing I read in that interview. Because I think we all knew that the image in the first announcement that we saw was Mikola, but to find out that Mikola went to the Shadow Realm because he was following Merica? That is huge. I don't think anyone mentioned that before. I have I certainly didn't see any comments about about that theory, so that is very surprising to me. Okay, this spell right here caught my eye because of all the butterflies. It's a pretty looking spell, but butterflies are so heavily linked to Melania. Um, and they're also a very significant item in the game as well, relating to Mikla and Melania. So I am betting this spell involves one of Mikla's enchantments. And it kind of looks like it produces a mass mind control effect similar to the bewitching branch that Mikola created. Okay, <laughs> I know people are going crazy because you get to kick. And the kicking does look very fun. This has got to be some new Ash of War that, yeah, it'll, it'll be very fun to, to use in fights. The Dark Knight of the Lands Between here. Oh, here we have another beast that is being operated by a human, it looks like. Um, so severed animal heads. Actually, this look this kind of looks like a rune bear paused like this, doesn't it? Uh it sort of looks like a bear with horns. I actually thought it reminded me a little bit, um, of the animal in the butterfly scene kind of looks like uh, it has it has horns here a little lion type creature oh this scene okay so all of the i thought these were flower well there are some blue flowers here too but um, this blue flower field reminded me of the moonlight altar with all the glowing blue flowers, but you have a dual wielding sorceress here performing moves that look very much like dancing. And we know that the blind swordsman was the character that trained Melania and well, the character that trained Melania was a blue dancer that she's wearing red, but I really do wonder if maybe this woman has is some it is in some way linked to the mysterious blind swordsman that taught Melania the waterfall dance. And yes, here's our hippo slash alligator with fur um, <laughs> that uses some sort of Aeonian bloom of thorns. This is gonna be a really fun boss. Oh, this guy right here. So this area looks like the subterranean level to me. This even looks like the same cavern that you fight Estelle in with the purple. But this skeleton guy is odd. It kind of looks like he has a bubble for a head. Now we have seen giant skeleton figures in the game before and I wonder if he's going to be related to them in some way or if he's going to have a He's going to be an extra clue about what the skeleton beings might have been. And yes, do you remember this guy from the portrait we saw earlier? He has the same seal as the king. And he is absolutely going to pull out his spine and use as a weapon. Because this universe is just so deranged. And look at this quote. Those stripped of the grace of gold shall all meet death. So this pretty much confirms that the rule of the Golden Order has definitely found its way into the Land of Shadow. Of 
oh, this move right here that he does where he presses down his spear and makes multiple spears come up. So yeah, uh, the spears weren't there. He definitely enchants them, you see. And bam. That looks exactly like the sacred phalanx move that the clean rot knights use where they conjure up spears that come up from the ground. Come Touch the withered arm and, and there we have an impaling move. Um, he is called Mesmer the Impaler. Also, Melania and her clean rot knights, they also were fans of impaling. <laughs> so we just keep drawing up the connections between um, Mesmer and his possible siblings and or parents. Oh, this is the this is the aspect of the Crucible Wings that people were freaking out about because in game only the Crucible Knights could attack with this move and it just wasn't locked. People had modded it in the game, but it wasn't available. So now it's officially available for everyone to use. And I think they definitely saved this part of the trailer for last because they knew people would freak out about it. May we meet again. All right, now this mysterious figure we have here. We don't really get to see a clear picture of them. Um, this is as clear as we're gonna get. This figure right here could either be Mikola or it could be Merica because you see a braid here. Mikola and Merica both are pictured with braids. And you also see a headpiece here Mikla and Merica are also both seen with a headpiece and they both have the same hair. And now that we know that Mikla followed Merica here, we don't know if this could be a cutscene of Merica coming here, arriving here first, or Mikla. But because we have seen Merica in Elden Ring already, I feel like this has to be Mikla because it's more shocking that way if it if this is the first time that we've seen um, we've seen him in his actual form, not as he is in his egg cocoon. And then here we go, the final shot of the shadow version of the Erd tree. And here we don't, it doesn't appear like it has that flowing gold through throughout it. So this might be one of the first images that we see when we, we start the DLC. All right, so this throne that Mesmer is sitting in, this art, Miyazaki actually said something, a very big clue about it. It's supposed to symbolize that Mesmer stands on equal footing to these other demigods and children of America who sat around in these thrones and held the rooms of the Erd Tree. So he's an important figure who rivals these other demigods. And as you play the DLC, you will learn a little about why he wasn't featured in the legends of the Erd Tree, the lands between. You'll realize why he exists in this shadow, this land of shadow. All right, this figure of him looks so much like the Clean Rot Knights. They have the same exact hunch, even the way that they're holding the spear so this really, really, <laughs> it's weird, but he's like a mixture of Melania and Rikard. And here is where the twisted theory comes into place. So you got to wonder why he wasn't featured in the Legends of the Erd Tree and the Lands Between. And I'm thinking he was uh, the, product of, the product of a great sin, possibly incestuous. We... It's not too far-fetched. I mean, we're already kind of there with America and Radigan, you know, in a way. So I'm wondering if he is the product of incest between either Melania and Rikard or Merica and Rikard because I cannot get over the snakes. The snakes are there for a reason. And Rikard is so, he is so heavily linked to snakes that he has to in some way 
be related to Rikard. But he looks so much like Melania with her move set. You even have the obscured eyes, which is a thing with Mikkel and Melania as well, with their eyes being obscured in the way that they're shown. So yeah, he's some tr- he's some sick, twisted result of cross breeding between the demigods or something. I can't I can't imagine otherwise. And look at his cape. So you see the images more clearly on this book that they have here. But this looks like a dragon. This looks like a ring of snakes. Maybe like an Ouroboros. They're devouring each other. And then you have a spear, the spiral symbolism imagery, possibly more snakes. Oh, more snakes here. So, and then flames. <laughs> there's, there's a lot going on. It's like he couldn't decide what logo he wanted and he just he just took them all. So clearly Mesmer is a man of many talents, Mesmer the Impaler. Um yeah, he's a very very interesting character. Clearly he's supposed to be the Melania of the DLC. FromSoft also released some official images and here we see more closely that Aeonian Bloom of Thorns spell again that the uh um, alligator hippo was using. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the mole man, the giant mole man that is going to take the place of rune bears. That is absolutely his, his purpose in the DLC. Okay. This, this guy reminds me of the worm face creatures because they kind of had the same cape and body type. But it's like a mosquito lantern version of them. Kind of looks like, it, it looks like it's out of Bloodborne, honestly, just, the, doesn't it? And here you have the acid poison swamp again. So this will definitely be in that, that poison swamp area. <laughs> More kicks, high kicks, very fun high kicks. The only moment of solace we will find in the game. You can kind of see right here too, closely. Um, those those uh, woody root systems. And here is a more clear picture of the tree and this veiled canopy that looks so much like America's room in my opinion. Oh, this photo. Yes, this photo. This is the one where I thought, okay, I was kind of settled on him being America's secret bastard son because this looks like America. You can see an armband. She is cradling a baby. It looks like she's cradling an infant, a swaddled infant. And yeah, you can see kind of the ring. Um, hear this in the background, her cape. So yeah, this I definitely think this is America's America's bastard son that she had with Rikard. I hate saying that because it's so gross and disgusting, but why else would he be spirited away to the Shadow Realm and hidden if not out of disgust? Either that or maybe it's Rikard's son and this is his grandmother. I don't know. There's, there's just something gross and weird with him that we will find out. Look at the, the way the snake comes out of between his legs. Gross. Oh, the ghost worm. I really hope the ghost worm will be friendly, but I doubt it. Kind of looks like it's giving you a tiny little thumbs up right there. Another image of the, the king pulling out his, his spine. That has clearly been malformed in some way. Yeah, this guy is, he's done something bad, I'm sure. And another image of our lion here with all of the, uh, the crucible horns, the two figures. He's really cool. His face just looks like a misbegotten to me for some reason, but that's, because I spent a lot of time looking at Misbegotten for some of my other videos. And another image of our basket boss right here and his entourage of it looks like they have some sort of um, new mask. So there's going to be a lot of new um, items, weapons, and spells and 
armor set, so I'm sure this is a different, um, they're a, a different kind of lesion that is escorting him. Oh, and that's for another video. All right, so that wraps up my very long, specific look into the trailer. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'd love to read your theories as well. People are just so gosh darn creative. I love, I love coming across stuff that people have figured out and just, just saying, yeah, that makes so much sense. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this look at the trailer and looking forward to hearing your thoughts. And I'll see you next time. Bye.